BYUSN, KYU going to work. New BYU basketball coach Kevin Young adds a four-star point guard to his roster. Who he is and why all of you should be stoked about what he'll bring to the Cougars. Former BYU Hoop star Trent Playston will join us to discuss what the signing really means and what has him most excited about what Kevin Young is building in Provo. We'll preview the track and field NCAA prelims live from Arkansas with BYU thrower Dallin Schertz. And why Rams head coach Sean McVay believes Puka Nakua will be even better this year. It's lofty praise and a lofty expectation. We're here for it. Welcome to BYU Sports Station, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, May 22nd. I am Spencer Linton alongside a man who one day hopes to sculpt the Cosmo the Cougar, Jerem Jordan. Who's, who's the guy, he lives, uh, he lives locally, and he does the bus for all the Pro Football Hall of Famers. That, that's pretty cool, right? Um, Elijah Crawford, uh, the newest signee for men's basketball. We'll break it down coming up in a moment. But he tweeted, uh, mood, and it was just a picture of Cosmo. Uh, in, uh, this is in the Wilkinson Center. So uh, it, outside the BYU store. Very, very excited for Elijah. We'll dig into it, uh, but uh, there's always a seat open for anybody named Elijah at BYU. I like that he tweeted that. Most BYU fans want a Cosmo who's jumping out of their chair when they think about what this kid and this signing means for I'm BYU I'm just glad basketball. they had stayed on Cosmo this time. Remember that? that was no, awesome. Cosmo that had flying up, please. That was funny. With that in mind, I'll rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. This is, this is an amazing place, has been for a long time. Where I really want to start this thing with is the players. What I want to do to take it to the next level is make this place the best place in college basketball. We're going to be able to get that done, and I really look forward to doing that. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Look, everybody just keep your head, okay? Keep your cool. Or don't, because BYU basketball has some very exciting news, specifically Kevin Young and the Cougars getting a big-time commitment from point guard Elijah Crawford, a four-star point guard out of Brewster Academy in New Hampshire. Six foot one. He told me in person, Jerem, he's six two. He's listed six two on the graphic, so there you go. We'll go with six two. He also added, in this day and age, I could probably list myself at six four and people would just go with it. Yeah. But we'll go with six two. 175 pounds, number 98 on ESPN's top 100 rankings for the 2024 class. Not surprisingly, he gives BYU a big boost in their recruiting rankings. More on that in a moment. He was originally committed to Stanford, but now he is committed to BYU. Not surprisingly as well, Brandon Dunson was the one that was hosting him on his trip. Dunson coming from Stanford to mm -hmm. join Kevin Young's staff at BYU. So those assistants doing some work as well. Jeremy, if you could quantify just how important this is for BYU and how big this is for the Cougars, what would you add or answer I, to that question? I don't know how to quantify it, but I, I just think it's big time. It's huge to get a guy of this ilk. Uh, Elijah Crawford is a guy that was headed to Stanford, as you mentioned. Each assistant has now brought essentially one guy with him. Kay Bakeda with Chris Burgess and now Brandon Dunson uh, with Elijah Crawford. Uh, this, I like this dude's game. He's super smooth, three-level scorer. He's got a mid-range game, finishes well at the rim with both hands. He's got some zip to him, can shoot it from three. He's got a nice step back game as well. I really like the film that I've seen on him. Top 100 guy from ESPN is a big deal, Spence. Um, he was a 176 shooter on the 180 scale, which means he can shoot it at all three levels. Um, you talk about the ESPN top 100 guys. The, since 2007, there's been top 100 lists, right? BYU has signed uh, you know, seven or eight guys on this list. They now have two from the top 100 this year in Brody Kozlowski and Elijah Crawford, which is big time. Um, and, and it's awesome. And I think that's great. It's not everything, but I certainly would like to sign more of those guys than less of those guys. And then you look at what this class has meant as we take a look at some of the rankings the last couple of years. What Kevin Young and his staff have done is brought in five dudes, two returners, three signees, that are, are starter types, right? Brody Kozlowski, fourth highest 24-7 uh, sports composite score in BYU's recruiting history. Mm -hmm. Top 100 guy, ESPN, Elijah Crawford. Seventh highest yep. composite score. Two top seven guys in the We're same We're going to bring on the guy that he displaced at seven, by the way, who's now eight, Trent Playstead, coming up in the program. K. Bakeda, Pac-12, number two in conference play, offensive rebounding block percentage. Downhaul and Rich Saunders return 
who, by the way, where Richie was one, Dallin was three in the PBR of player efficiency this last year while they were on the court. You talk about these five moves for this staff, and they're not done, are tremendous. And it means that BYU's recruiting class, by the way, 24-7 sports, is number 24 in the country ahead of Kansas. Amazing. Which is incredible. So props to this staff for getting it done, and they are not done. The problem is Kansas already had, like, the number one recruiting class at Kansas before they added to this year's roster. I'll take any win in basketball against but Kansas But BYU's beating form. Kansas in now any form. in actual games and in recruiting at least for 2024, which is I'll, pretty I'll take wild. It. Every and time. I, I know things can change, but let's just enjoy this for the moment. I spent about 20 minutes with Elijah as he was touring BYU Broadcasting and on campus, and I couldn't help but be super impressed with how cerebral he is, and clearly he's really intelligent. Like, they love his game and his skill set, but they love his mind and his ability to absorb basketball knowledge and just understanding of – flow and pace and positioning on the floor, how to utilize certain screens, how to work certain actions. This this sounds like Dallin Hall, right? Like all the things that Dallin Hall does really well, they, they like about Elijah Crawford. I asked him, who do you try and emulate? Who do you pattern your game after? And we're going to have him on the show soon. He said, Donovan Mitchell, he really likes Spida and, and what he does there. And I thought, okay, hey, <laughs> if you want to emulate a guy at the point guard position that's an NBA scorer who is super smart and does all the things I just talked about, Donovan Mitchell's a good way to go. But, Jerem, his film speaks for itself. Stanford wanted him, and now BYU got him. He beat, and, they beat out Kansas and Florida, yes, who, who were hot and heavy late. I was just going to bring that up. Like There were so many high-level schools, Kansas probably the most notable, that BYU holds off to get a guy that they need, and he fills a critical spot in Kevin Young's roster. How long have we been asking, who the heck is going to be the backup point guard? Like, BYU needs another ball here. Crawford. Dawson Baker can help out a little bit. We talked to Dawson in Arizona, and I asked him, hey, do you want the ball in your hands? He's like, oh, I'm okay doing a little bit. But Dawson would prefer to work off the Just ball. Be the two, yeah. yeah, he's like, oh, if I get a rebound and we're in transition, I'm cool with that, but I don't, I don't want to deal with all the stuff the point guard deals with. This – is a massive boost for BYU's point guard position specifically. Now Dallin Hall has a true backup capable point guard. Yeah, he, he jumps in right away at the backup point guard spot. Dallin Hall is your starter. Elijah Crawford is your backup. Came from Brewster Academy, by the way, in New Hampshire. That's where Charles Abuo played a year as well back in the day. He's from Augusta, Georgia. We need to talk to him about Masters tickets. Oh, I, well, I'd... and then – we did talk about that, too. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and then he gives me Devin Booker vibes, honestly. Okay. Like, a little more attack at the rim. Um, but he's, he's got a really nice mid-range game. And so we'll see what, how that is injected into the offense with Kevin Young and whatnot. Because you watch the Pacers in the playoffs, and you're like, yes, there's a space for mid-range. It's not all just dunks and threes. I know that's the way the game is going quite a bit. But he just, he just provides a nice element there. He he's, looks strong, yet he's got some zip to him, which is exciting. So... I'm stoked, man. The talent continues to get upgraded for BYU, and we've been kind of waiting for the next signee. BYU has been very calculated and patient in who they're targeting and what type of player they want to get. They have four scholarships uh, remaining, so we take a look at topic two here, the updated roster. What still needs to be addressed as we now have nine scholarship players and four scholarships available? If you've been paying attention, the answer is largely the same. They got their backup point guard and ball handler. BYU still needs an athletic wing and a guy who can defend a team's best player. BYU needs a guy who can go both ways. Good, long, athletic defender and a guy who can just go get a bucket when you need one. That's the one thing that BYU was notably missing last year was like a guaranteed hoop. I know Jackson Robinson at times did that, and he certainly was that in the tournament game in Omaha. He was make a shot guy. Dallin as opposed Hall to go get had a shot. his moments, but BYU just needs a guy like, oh my gosh, we need to stop this run. We just need a dude who can go get a bucket or get to the free throw line. Maybe Dawson Baker can he's, emerge into that he's role. He's part of that conversation. But BYU needs another one, and they need that athleticism on the wing. So that's priority number one for me. And after that, BYU needs another big. BYU just needs some some raw size to help out Foose and Kebakeda in the post. Two wings, two bigs for me. And one of those has to be, yes, defender. 
And if they have another, if it's the same guy who can also get a bucket, great. But that's ambitious, right? Be always being ambitious, though. Can you? Yes, you need long wing defender, and then you need one-on-one -on -one score. You need another one-on-one -on -one score. That way, you have Dawson, and you have this other person. Right now, Dallin Hall to me in the pick and roll is really effective, but not as effective as a one-on-one -on -one guy. Maybe off-season development plays into that, and we'll see uh, new versions of certain guys show up for sure. Elijah Crawford's a guy who can get a bucket, by the way. He's a he's a one on one guy too, but uh, I'm not going to ask a true freshman out of high school to be one of the top two like main in this critical situation. Need you to get a bucket, guys, right right away. Well, I'm going to give him a season, right, and then we'll go from there. But yeah, front court you need two bigs. You, you, Brody Kozlowski's a stretch four in that conversation, but yeah, Foos and Kata, you need you need two more guys. So. We'll see. Can we but it's revel? looking good, man. Can it's just, looking good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can we just revel again in the fact that BYU has the 24th best recruiting class according to 24-7 sports and is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th in the Big 12 behind number 3 Arizona, number 7 Baylor, Arizona State, Bobby Hurley doing some work at number 8, TCU 17th, Colorado number 23, and then yeah. BYU at number 24. We've, I, I've, we've, I've complained about why isn't BYU better in this space? Like, why, why do we always have to be, like, 50th or 60th in football recruiting rankings? Like, you, you are your talent and your coaching, that, that combination, right? Your discipline, your S&C, your all of that, all of it matters. Like, why can't BYU recruit at this level? They are now in men's basketball, which is so exciting. Validation and, for Kevin Young and what he brings yes. to BYU. And again, they're not done, bro. There's going to be a couple more guys like this that make a splash where we go, hey, we're a tourney team. Let's get after it. You can feel the ambition with BYU men's basketball. You can feel the excitement. Props to the Royal Blue Collective and the team and the coaches and the staff and everybody involved in the entire process that goes into getting quality players. BYU is making a name for itself uh, in this space, in recruiting, bringing in good guys. And again, they're not done. I'm just so excited for where BYU is headed as a program right now. Our question of the day, with BYU signing four-star point guard Elijah Crawford, which four words would you use to describe Kevin Young's first recruiting class thus far? At Spencil underscore on X. Says, oh, your burner? From Pope... To hope. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Jackson Payne chiming in on X. And a quote, I am the Senate. That Kevin would, Young. That would be uh, Chancellor Palpatine, uh, <laughs> I believe. In, uh, okay. Was it episode three? Yeah. Brandon Palmer on Instagram ads, start drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> People have been long drinking the Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid is one word in this case, so that totally works. Uh, oh, yeah. Jordan Royal on X says, only sign four <laughs> stars. So far, Brody Kozlowski. <laughs> oh, by the way, Brooks Barr, um, after his mission, is a high-profile guy. On, on three, he's rated even higher than Elijah Crawford. Not on ESPN, but, like, Brooks Barr's a, a good dude to, who could take over for Dallin Hall in a couple of years when he's done and back from a mission. All right, so uh, we'll see him That's in a part couple of, of years. That's part of this process, right? For sure. Hook'em Coogs on X says... And these forward, forward answers again, it's just the beginning. I agree, man. I, like, we're not like, oh, we're done. This is our team. We're going. Still four scholars. Let's go. Hashtag BYUSN on X, Facebook, and Instagram to join that conversation. Fantastic responses thus far. Okay, tune in Friday for a BYU Sports Nation Deep Blue special featuring stories from BYU hoops, current former players like Trevin Nell, Jeff Chapman, Mike Hall. Friday at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break. Former BYU basketball star and NBA second round draft pick Trent Playsta joins us to discuss what he likes most from what Kevin Young has done thus far and what he would do if he were in Jackson Robinson's shoes approaching the draft. This is BYU SN. BYU Sports Nation is sponsored by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. First three falls for Richie Saunders. Another one! What a move by Hall. Gets the roll. Welcome to the Marriott Center. 
and welcome to Studio B. Where's the Marriott Center? I have no idea where that is. Still waiting to find out. Can't find it on Google Maps anywhere in Provo. Where? The Marriott. Oh, the Marriott Center? Oh, yeah. That place next Tell door. Tell me to you're us. an outsider without telling me you're an outsider. This is your day to day BYU <laughs> Sports play by play. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Our pleasure and privilege now to welcome in former BYU basketball standout and a second round NBA draft pick, big man Trent Plasted. Yeah. Is back on BYUS. And Trent, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, guys. Just uh, trying to break up the day talking to my good folks at Beauty Sports Nation. So uh, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Anytime we can interrupt your normal work day for things that are related to BYU is a good day for us. So we appreciate you spending some time with us, Trent. Me, me as well, right? Uh, just hope nobody from my none of my bosses see me on TV. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Trent, what are you doing in there? Don't well, worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just talking about the most recent four-star signee that BYU has brought in, Elijah Crawford, and BYU needed some help, some depth at the point guard position to bolster what Dallin Hall is going to do. What do you think about BYU's newest signee, Elijah Crawford, and what Kevin Young is building? Well, it's just been a, a wild month in general, right? So, like, they, Mark Pope leaves, and they, they, Kevin Young comes in. Like, I, I thought, like, the whole roster was going to be gone, Right. Kevin Young did an amazing job of keeping key guys, and now he's got two four-star commits. So, like, it's been an interesting month, and he's hit all hit all the right notes. So, like, the most recent addition with Elijah is incredible. Like, it's not every day you get four-star guys, and so they've got two of them now, and maybe they'll get more. We'll see. But uh, it's, it's a pretty amazing pickup for them, and uh, I just hope he comes in, has a big impact, and uh, is happy. That's the most important thing for, for any players. They play and they're happy. The only bad news with this signing for you specifically is that his composite score is seventh highest in BYU history on 24-7 sports, bumping you to eighth. But, Trent, you're still top ten, okay? I, I had a composite score one day. I didn't even know what my composite score was. <laughs> I'm, not, I, I, I'm not offended at all, so good for him. I'm glad he bumped me to, to number eight. I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. You, you're number eight now, and Brody Kozlowski's four, Elijah Crawford's seven, K. Bakeda is a really nice pickup out of the transfer portal from Utah. You keep Dallin Hall and Richie Saunders. Kevin Young and this staff have done tremendous work, and they still have four scholarships to hand out, Trent. Yeah, and, and two assistant coaches. So they're doing amazing things with a, a skeleton crew. So, so four scholarships to go. Like I hope they go more towards the experience route personally. Um, but I also, you know, the best talent you're going to get is from high school. You know, like but experience – is huge dividends. So we'll see what they do. I imagine they're going to hit the transfer portal for at least two or three guys, maybe one more high school guy if I was them, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Trent placed it as with us on BYU Sports Nation. We just went through the list of all the guys that Kevin Young has brought in thus far, including Chris Burgess and Brandon Dunson as an as assistants, the two high school signees and Brody Kozlowski and Elijah Crawford. You get experience that you were talking about with K. Bakeda, who comes over from Utah, but then you maintain those core, those key, those principal guys in Dallin Hall and Richie Saunders. So of all the names I just presented, Trent, which do you feel is the most important acquisition or person to keep holdover, if you will, that Kevin Young has pulled off thus far? Oh, for me, it's, a, it's actually a pretty easy one. I think it's Dallin Hall. Um, I, I think there's other players that you just mentioned that have more upside than Down Hall. Not the Down Hall is Down Hall's a great player. Like he's he's wonderful. But like, you know, you guys like the shiny object, Brody Kozlowski, Elijah, like those are four star guys. And I actually think Down was a four star guy, if I'm not mistaken, coming out of high school. But like he ran the show last year. He's been in the Big Twelve, you know, like he's he's a seasoned veteran. You know what I mean? So I think he's the most important, you know, returner for them just because I think he brings continuity to a team that really, really needs it with the new staff. And and the Big 12 is, is widely considered to be the best league in college sports from a basketball perspective. And so you have to have guys that have that experience. And to bring him back at that point guard spot is, is by far the biggest pickup he's had so far. Let's talk about Jackson Robinson's uh, similarities in your situation in that you left with eligibility, you were drafted in the second round, you had an amazing pro career overseas Jackson Robinson may bounce uh, from BYU and go to the second round or come back a lot of rumors that he may go to Kentucky what was that decision like for you of of trying to figure out should I enter the draft even though I'm probably a second round guy well it's a way different thing for Jackson than it was for me because Jackson could get paid 
You know what I mean? So like, <laughs> like if Jackson comes back, whether he goes to BYU or Kentucky, there's a decent chance he might get paid more going to Kentucky than he would as a, a league minimum guy in the NBA his first year. So, so I, I think that's a, a whole different loaded ball game for him than me. And the other thing is, is, is I was there for three years. Jackson's an older guy, right? Like I was, you know, I was 20 when I left. Um, he's he, because of COVID, like he should be out of eligibility, but he's got one more year. So like, it's a little bit of a different ball game. And I think the decision for him is, is he can make a good living coming back to college, but, can he strike by the iron top? Is his draft stock, he feels like the highest is now to give him the best chance to stick in the NBA long term. I don't know that. Um, there was a point this year, guys, or I mean, you guys had me commentate a game with Jeremy and Jackson was like a, considered a first round guy. So like, I mean, it's, it's a matter of if he feels like he can stick in the NBA and last for a few years, cause then he's going to make more money in the NBA than he would staying. But uh it would be a pretty enticing thing to come back to BYU, Kentucky, or wherever he wants to go. I've heard it's Kentucky or Kansas, and I bet you he makes just as much there as he would as a, as a league minimum guy in the NBA or close to it. Trent placed it on BYU Sports Nation. Given what you went through in your own draft experience, and a great point by you, NIL was not a thing, so take it for what it's worth. But if you had a conversation with Jackson right now, what would be the first piece of advice you would offer him, given your experiences? Um, just given my experience, when I came out of college, I was pretty convinced as a young kid that like, I had to do everything well, right? Like I remember being at BYU and feeling like I needed to work on my jump shot and stuff like that. And and I did, but like the NBA was a specialist league. So my advice to him was just don't like do what you do well. And for him, he's going to be a three and D guy. That's what his situation is going to be in the NBA, right? Like for me in the NBA, like, at BYU, I scored a lot of points, but I was never going to be a scorer in the NBA. You know what I was going to be? I was going to be a, a a rim runner and defensive rebounder, right? That's what I was going to be. So, so I didn't need to worry about trying to go and score 20 points in the draft combine or something like that because that was never going to be my role. And so for him, as he goes through the process, he needs to focus on hitting open shots and playing good defense, not worry about all the other stuff that's really not going to be his role when he gets to the NBA. That would have changed things for you quite a bit, which uh, we talked about when you were in here. Uh, BYU still has, as mentioned, four scholarships and three assistants to hire. There's still stuff to do. Yet, what are your expectations at this point, albeit early, for next season for BYU men's basketball? Oh, gosh, that's a tough question to ask a former player who's trying to help out the current staff. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, so here's the deal from my perspective. Number one, last year was incredible for BYU basketball. And uh, I think everybody could recognize that. I think, if, you know, had you asked me at the beginning of the year, what was the expectation for that season? Like, let's be honest about what it was. Nobody in their right mind thought BOU was going to have the year that they had last year. And to be quite frank, I believe they overachieved yes. last year yeah. in the Big 12. No right? question. And, and so heading into this year, I, I feel like what the everybody wants to be like, oh, we had such a great year last year, and this year we're going to improve upon it. And, and I hope that's true, but I don't expect that to happen. You've got a new staff, a, a new coach who's a great coach with a great pedigree, but he's never coached in college before, a new roster, right, getting the feel for BYU. So uh, I would temper the expectations a little bit and let them get their feet underneath of them. But I think they could definitely compete. You know what I mean? I think they could be a tournament team with the roster they have. But I don't want anybody to get too far too far out of left field, like, oh, we're going to go win the Big 12. I don't. I think it's possible, not plausible. But uh, I'm hoping that they are a tournament team next year and they are, you know, in the Big 12, which is, I guess, whatever, the Big 14 or however many 16 teams next have. year, yeah. Freaking leave and come and whatever else. <laughs> I'm hoping they, they finish in like the, the, the six, to, six to eight range and are a solid tournament team. Hey, be a top half team in a 16 team conference. And there's a real argument that even with Texas and Oklahoma leaving for the SEC, the Big 12 is actually going to be tougher with Arizona yeah, yeah. and Arizona State and Colorado and Utah coming over. So it, it is pretty wild that you can lose two name brands like that, but you bring in the four corner schools, which include Arizona. And my gosh, Trent, like looking at early preseason projections for the top five teams in America in some polls, 
are Big 12 teams. I mean, that is crazy for Kevin Young to encounter that in his first year. So let's say BYU does finish eighth place and they're just inside that top half. You clearly feel like that would be good enough, yes? Yes, I mean, I, I do. I, I mean, I hope people don't like get mad at me for that, but like, I think Kevin Young wants to build something great, and obviously that they've got returning experience and they've got four more scholarships to fill out. And those four people are going to be crucial to the success they have next year. They got a great foundation, but they need more, right? Especially in a league like the Big Twelve. So if they finish in the top half of the league next year, I think that's a great win for Kevin Young in his first year, right? I think that's amazing. Um, even if they finish around nine or 10, I, I don't think that's like the end of the world. Now, if they finish at the bottom, I think people have a right to be upset, but that's just the way life goes. But I would say like that eight, that top eight would be a, a good, a good win for the BYU team next year. Kevin Young said in his press conference, he wants BYU to be the best place for young men to develop and prepare for the NBA as the second to last guy to be drafted from BYU. What will it take for BYU to actually start to produce more NBA players? Oh, gosh. Uh, uh, like, let me put it this way, guys. You don't get to be an NBA player just because of development, right? That's a huge component to it. I don't want to diminish that. But, guys, I'm, I'm 6'11". I, I, when I was in college, I, I jumped really high and ran really fast. That's why I got drafted in the NBA is because of the, my measurables, right? Like, there are guys that are great college players that will never be NBA players just because they don't have the – the natural talent to do so. So the biggest thing that you could possibly do to make BYU a pipeline for NBA, the NBA is yes, the development of players, but also making sure you get players into BYU that have legit NBA talent and measurables, like intangibles from a physical perspective. And, you know, you've seen that a little bit. He's got a couple of four-star recruits that like, those are the type of guys that need to come into BYU that he could develop into NBA players. Right. Um, and that's not to knock guys like, cause there are guys that come in that, uh, are lower ranked guys that just have the measurables that are really athletic guys. So, so that's the biggest thing to me is he needs to recruit the right guys that he could mold that have the potential to even make it there. Cause there are guys that are good players that just don't have that athletic ability that will never probably be drafted the NBA. Trent, one more question before we let you go and get back to your, you know, actual workplace. The BYU bigs, well, they're limited at this point, and it's Foos and Keba Keda in large part. So how would you assess the status of the front court? Does BYU need another starter potential there coming through the portal, or do they just need depth? Like, do you feel like Foos and Keba are good enough to lead the charge up front? How do I say this without diminishing the guys? Foose is amazing. And Kate is, uh, I think he's a, a great addition. He's an energy guy. Uh, he's a guy that's going to start a game. But like from, all, from what I know, he'll foul out if you give him more than 20 minutes a game. <laughs> right? So, like, so like Foose obviously has a lot, a lot of experience starting. And I think he's a starting level big. What they need is they need somebody that can shoot the basketball from the outside in today's game. And I know that's what Kozlowski is, but he's also a freshman. So they need that kind of combo inside-outside guy that uh, what Waterman was last year. Uh, I'm hoping they have something similar, but maybe just a, a bit more physical um, that could complement a foos, right? And they could kind of interchange what those matchups are because they, they complement each other well. You know, Foose could be a four or a five. Um, I don't think he's a stretch four, but he could play the four or maybe guard the four when when needed. But ideally, you've got that other guy who's a, a kind of an inside-outside guy, a guy that can shoot threes and guard inside as well. Um, and that's what they need, right? Uh, Khalifa kind of played that role for him last year. Like, Khalifa was not going and banging in inside, but he was, he was passing the ball really well and he was shooting threes. Waterman was that guy. They need those guys that can stretch the floor. That's just the way basketball is in this day and age. Trent, great stuff. We appreciate the time, man. Always good to catch up with you, and let's hang out again soon. You got it, guys. Thanks for having me, and uh, uh, good luck to the Cougs, and good luck to you guys. I, I hope to talk again soon. Let's go. Thanks, Trent, Trent placed it on BYU Sports Nation. Very well thought out. Like, I love – how detailed his responses are, and he'll tell you what he thinks. Exactly, it's very it, straightforward. How do he's I trying to say this. So he's just trying to help the staff too. <laughs> uh, Kevin Kata's uh, 
Personal fouls per 40. What's your guess there? 6.1. 6.0. Very nice. <laughs> if you miss any interviews, trending topics, deep blues, any other BYU Sports Nation content, it's all on demand on BYUSN.com and the free BYU TV app. Let's talk a little football after the break. L.A. Rams head coach Sean McVay had glowing things to say about Puka's offseason. So is Puka really poised for an even bigger season in year two of his pro career? This is BYUSN. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Follow BYU Sports Nation on social. We're on Facebook, X, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Welcome back to Studio B. I am Spencer. He is Jerem. Let's roll out your headlines. Then Toop signs four-star point guard Elijah Crawford, the Augusta, Georgia native. is BYU's seventh highest signing ever per 24-7 sports ratings. Crawford was originally recruited by Brandon Dunson when he was at Stanford. Reopened his commitment, joined the Cougars yesterday. That makes two ESPN Top 100 signees for Kevin Young already this offseason. And a Top 25 signing class thus far. Jackson Robinson featured in a few post-NBA Combine mock drafts. Notably, Bleacher Report has him at number 49 overall to the Indiana Pacers. NBA Draft.net, 38th overall to the New York Knicks. Jackson was not included in ESPN's mock draft, nor the Sporting News latest mock draft. A publication called Tankathon, yes, that's real, has him as the 59th best prospect, but there are only 58 picks in this year's draft. The track and field NCAA West prelims begin in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The men begin competition today, the women tomorrow both run through Saturday. We'll chat with BYU thrower Dallin Schertz in the next segment. Big 12 presidents and chancellors unanimously voted yesterday to approve the settlement in the House versus NCAA class action lawsuit as reported by numerous sources. This suit would allow for schools to share money with current athletes and also back pay former athletes who were not permitted to participate in NIL. The ACC followed suit and also unanimously voted to approve the settlement yesterday as well. It's gonna get a lot more expensive for schools with college athletes. Breaking. Uh, Daniel Schneeman continues to swing a hot bat going four or five yesterday with a home run double, three RBIs. Now batting 397 with four home runs, eight doubles, 17 RBIs in the month of May. He's on fire. I don't want anybody on the Guardians roster to get injured or hurt, but Daniel Schneeman's ready just in case. <laughs> just displaced. Just, just in case. Those are today's headlines. Now, some opinions in the whip. The Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Sean McVay had some flattering words about Puka Nakua yesterday. What I love about him and really a lot of these other rookies from last year is there's a humility. You know, there was obviously um, a lot of accolades that came with the production that he had, but uh, that's accompanied with an authentic humility. And he's got such a great example with some of the guys in his room, especially Cooper Cup. And, and you can see, I know you guys probably see the workout videos, but when you've got a guy that models the way and sets the tone like that, and Puka has such reverence and respect, I've seen a guy that's really continuing to become even more of a pro, taking care of his body, getting on a more disciplined diet, the way that he's come out here and worked hard, um, the way that he's just so receptive to coaching, but also, um, you know, earning that confidence, it, it's been great. How much better can Puka be in year two? I think it's a lot to ask him to be better than right. he was, <laughs> was awesome. in year one. And he's going to have, not shockingly, way more attention from opposing defenses, which frankly opens things up for guys like Cooper Cup, which is nuts to think about. Oh man, Cooper, you're going to catch some more footballs this year because your boy Puka Nakua is going to have so much attention. Crazy. So, how do you define better? Uh, I don't think his numbers are going to be better. It would be really difficult to do that. And Cooper Cup, we think, the LA Rams are hoping, is going to be healthy more this year than he was last year, which gave Puka more opportunity. Yes. So don't be shocked if his numbers dip. Doesn't mean he can't be just as impactful and making those big catches. He could have more touchdowns. He only had six, sure. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. For 105 and almost 1,500 yards, six was kind of low. So I, I'm hoping he's in like the 12 plus TD okay. range. So touchdowns. That, that he can get better. Is he going to catch 100 balls for Man. 1486 again? That was incredible. It was wild. Like that was, that was, uh, the, like, Perhaps the greatest year by a BYU wide receiver ever in the NFL. It was, was the greatest awesome year by great any years. NFL rookie receiver in two different categories. It was amazing. Like, 
Austin at receiver, Todd Christensen at tight end. In terms of like numbers and competing in the league that way, have been some all-time performances. So, yeah, he can have more touchdowns certainly. But if he like if he goes 80, 1200, he's a thousand-yard receiver again. That'd be amazing. And has 10 touchdowns. It's, he's expected to be. He's that good. Even with Cooper Cup. Uh, Matthew Stafford's pretty good, too. Yeah. He deserves some of the credit for what the Rams are doing, that's for sure. No, Puka threw to himself. I don't know if you knew that. PFF College <laughs> Football put out the following graphic of Power 5 active players with the most career QB pressures. And look at this. Tyler Batty, number five on the list with 101. So. Old man Batty. Is Tyler Batty BYU's best NFL prospect currently on the roster. He could be. I think that Ben Bywater's right in there with him. Um, so we'll, we'll see, but those numbers are good. He's racked up some good numbers since 2020. I was trying to think, is there a young guy that is going to bring up that we feel like has real NFL potential, like a Ciala Acer, or maybe one of the Kafusis? Mm. Too early to tell on those guys. With the veterans, it might be Tyler Batty. He's, he's certainly uh, proven in terms of what he's done um, numerically at the position the last couple of years. Yeah. Is we'll Jack see, Kelly that guy? You ask Blaine Fowler. He thinks They're Jack might be the best NFL prospect on the roster right now. They're expecting Jack to be awesome. So, yeah, it's going to be fun to watch this year. Fun question for sure. Okay, what's your reaction to the Big 12 being the first conference to settle in the House versus NCAA case? This is what Brett Yormark does. Brett Yormark gets his people, his chancellors, his schools, his programs to be at the forefront of things that are inevitable yeah. but still you can you can make way. Yeah. You can lead that effort, and so not surprising at all that the Big 12 I think is leading out in this. Yeah. No, it's it's uh, they see the writing on the wall, and they're like, all right, let's get to work and figure this out. Yeah. Why not be first here? He was first in securing a TV deal. <laughs> yes. One quote in um, an article I read about this, um, it said there's also roughly 20 million permissive revenue sharing that's expected to begin in the fall of 2025. This revenue sharing will give athletic departments the direct ability to pay the players yeah. a massive paradigm. Pay for play. I have so many questions about how that's going to work and is everyone required to do it or is it up to 20? How, who's setting the limits on roster numbers? Because uh, we've talked about it previously, like, oh, can BYU men's volleyball win in the Big 12 per se, but could they do more than the four and a half scholarships, which is so low. If the NCAA regulation nine, goes away, you can give scholarships to as many players as you want. What role does Title IX play in this? Do there need to be even numbers of scholars? Like, how do, I have a million questions that are unanswered at this point. Yeah, uh, the NCAA is losing grip in a hurry. But now I think it just comes down to how much money do you have and how many scholarships do you want to offer and can you afford to Who's have that Who's capping many? what? And this is a P4 Who's conversation. Who's governing anything way, right mostly. now? Yeah. This is the Wild West. There's no governor right now. Like, the NCAA is still technically in charge, but... Are they really? Are they really right now? There's no, there's no governor. It's crazy. Yeah. Billy the Kid. <laughs> Good for William. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness. There was a report yesterday that there will be no mascot mode in the new College Football 25 video game. Any piece of information with that what? game is on our show now. So how bummed do you think Cosmo is? Probably way bummed. Um, I liked playing uh, mascot mode just because it was funny. You got you got eleven on eleven mascots. Uh, it's so it's ridiculous. So it's random. So ridiculous, especially when you're playing like Oklahoma State. You know that big old cowboy head Massive running muscle. around. Like, is it was dude, that Pistol Pete? Dude, Pistol that Pete, is, is dude. That <laughs> I met the Pistol Pete guys in Stillwater. They're yeah. awesome, by yeah. the way. And they oh, get, like without costume? They get custom boots. Oh. Okay. That, oh. and they told me Oklahoma State fans will try and buy them from them sometimes for five figure sums because they want to have like these certain boots but it's like no it's like they a cherished sell. possession because only pistol peets get those specific uh, boots and they're very nice but crazy right i need cosmo to have like some jays some jordans that yes. are like custom yes like custom <laughs> cosmo things that's funny uh not we asked cosmo how he's feeling about it and we can just tell right away from his face that he's yeah here's his reaction super upset yeah. gosh man he, he's that's just torn up that's upset face he's just torn up okay so just to give you an idea of what he looks like when he's happy, here's, here's yeah. Cosmo. Yeah, this is a difference. With the happy face. Yeah. Can we, can we show you Cosmo with the happy face? 
Oh, yeah. Very different. Can yeah. you not tell yeah, there's, how happy there's a, he is right there? He looks very happy in that. Same photo. <laughs> Yesterday, ECU, East Carolina, still not over the loss of 2017. Uh, baseball team posted a game update. Random citizen commented, you guys reek. Okay. In his bio, he included he was a Knicks fan. So, East Carolina's official athletics account posted this quote tweet in response. <laughs> What time is the Knicks game tonight? <laughs> Should more official team accounts be trolling random citizens? A million percent. In I fact, love, can I, I, love can I this. stand up and applaud that? I just, hey, I'm, I'm standing yeah. up. I'm Wolf, applauding Wolf the Blitzer. effort Wolf by ECU yeah. Athletics. Why don't well we stand done. up? Why don't we stand well up more often? <laughs> can we just next? On the Blitz Report. <laughs> hey, take us to break. Stand up. Let's go. Let's go. That is such a good tweet. Yeah, that's great. Or post. Up next, we'll preview the NCAA track and field West prelims with elite BYU throwing specialist Dallin shirts. We're standing up for Dallin. Why? Let's stand up more. This is BYU Sports Nation. Why not? <laughs> this portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B. As promised, time to preview the NCAA track and field west prelims with a guy who is one of the best discus throwers in the entire country. He is Dallin Schertz at BYU yeah. Track and Field. Yeah. Joining us from rainy Fayetteville, Arkansas. Dallin, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's just go ahead and start with the emotions of the event. How are you feeling this go around, and, and how are you handling the nerves ahead of uh, another big competition? To be honest, I'm not trying to think about it too much. I got a chip in my shoulder. Last last time I was here two years ago, I didn't qualify. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm here to prove to myself that uh, it's not the facility, it's the athlete. So <laughs> I'm going to come back and uh, uh, do my thing, throw far, and uh, hopefully get myself to Eugene in two weeks. So literally so. in Fayetteville, Arkansas, you didn't qualify. So you're back at the scene of the crime. And uh, yep. what's what's going to be different this time? And how will the weather impact it? Because it looks pretty wet. Um, well, that's for Friday, luckily. So weather is, is promising for Friday. Um, last I checked, it was sunny and hot during the window that I'm throwing. So I don't think I'll have to worry too much, but that could change pretty easily. So I'm just going to, regardless of the weather, I just need to make sure that uh, I get good sleep tonight because it's uh, two nights before you compete is the most important night of rest. Mm. And that I eat well. I don't wear myself out. And I just uh, mentally just keep myself calm and cool and not psych myself out and just visualize my technique and just get confident in in the three throws that I have, you only get three, which is why it's kind of stressful. Mm. But, yeah. Why is two nights and not one night before more important? I don't know. Um, but I put it to the test, and I, I've had terrible sleep the night before I compete, and I still compete well. But then I have terrible sleep two nights before I compete, and uh, I, I guess maybe there's some truth to that. It could just be a placebo effect. Okay. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but I'd like to believe that the two nights before you sleep or compete, if you sleep well, you're going to do well. So, okay. so I'm just going to do my best to maybe pop a melatonin tonight. Let's go. Some good rest. Let's you know. go. I'm all about it. Hey, uh, we'll make sure that we're sleeping well tonight so that we can have a good show two days from now. On Friday. Okay. We're yeah, on Friday. Friday. Hey, we're going yeah, yeah, yeah. to have a like good it. show on Friday. Like and you're going to have a great performance. I like it. Okay, Dallin, um, as you assess what lies ahead for you, and you've already mentioned the motivating factor of not qualifying when you were in Arkansas last time, how has preparation been different specifically this go around so that you show up and do what you know you're capable of doing? Well, I'm a better athlete than I was two years ago. Um, I PR this year, finally. That was uh, a relief. Um, I've... Uh, I'm, I'm just, I, I guess, more confident in, in my throws, in my technique, in my consistency. Um, I mean, my biggest motivation for doing well on Friday is so that I can get to NCAAs and to place well there to raise my world ranking. Um, uh, the NCAA Nationals meet is ranked, 
And so when when you have a ranked meet, if you place well, you get bonus points, and those bonus points help an awful lot when you're trying to raise your world ranking status. And for the Olympics, the window is the top 32 for discus. Right now, I'm 43rd. I just checked this morning. Nice. <laughs> I was 36 um, two weeks ago. So just got to get myself to better competitions and uh, work on stuff. But yeah, throw far. Regardless, I just need to throw far every time. Hey, the, <laughs> at just... the end of the day, that's the goal, right? <laughs> <laughs> just throw it far. <laughs> that's what we asked the BYU quarterback to do, too. So it's, it's the same thing. Okay, what... What's the goal besides qualifying for NCAAs? Because right now, as you mentioned, you got the school record. You second, took second in the Big 12. You're fourth uh, in the country, ranked in the discus. You mentioned 43rd in the world, which is wild. What are the goals for you uh, as you compete to advance? And then, obviously, you've already qualified for the Olympic trials for the United States. Um, gee. Obviously, I want to kind of ride this horse as far as it'll go so my my plan regardless of how well olympic trials goes i mean there's there, there's a lot of good throwers in the u.s so it would it would it'd be pretty cool if i made it but i wouldn't be surprised if i did just being realistic but obviously that's my goal um but like if whatever happens i'll still be thrown for a few years after this too so at least four more years to try to qualify for the next Olympics. We'll see. Dallin Schertz is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Last night, you gave a youth devotional, along with some of your other track and field athletes, to uh, a bunch of uh, up-and-comers and, and members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in the area. How was that devotional experience? It was great. Yeah, we... Uh, um, it's been a long time since I've sang Army of Helaman. I think the last time I sang that in the choir was when I was like, 16 years old <laughs> so we did that all together as a track team all 54 of us qualifiers um the spirit was strong we had some great talks um and uh the kids were enthusiastic obviously i tower over all of them so <laughs> that's a lot of uh well you know a lot of eyes staring up <laughs> but um yeah no that was a great experience so it's uh Hopefully we get to do that. I guess the team gets to do that next time they come back to Fayetteville, you know, for their sakes. It'd be fun to have for every athlete that comes here to have that experience. Have you reminded anyone of the football result in Fayetteville? The football result? Have I reminded anybody? Yeah. I, I think they're butthurt because it hasn't come up. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. That was a great win for BYU. You've been on the show several times, by the way. You're one of my favorite people. Not only because you're from Oregon, but also you went to Porto Alegre, uh, Brazil, on your mission, which is where I went as well. Remind me, north or south? North, was it not? North, yeah. The yeah, greatest north. mission in the world. And our people uh, are, are dealing with some flooding down there. And you're a molecular biology major. Did you did you graduate? I did, yeah. Congrats, Congratulations. Man. You got things going on I, in your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what I don't have going on is midterms coming up. <laughs> We're done with those. Let's yeah, go. baby. Let's go. Yeah, baby. That might be the best win of all. Hey, uh, just a final word of advice as we say goodbye. Make sure you throw the disc really far. As far as you can. <laughs> just throw it far, man. <laughs> That's what my mom tells me every time, too. <laughs> uh, Dallin, uh, best of luck to you. Let's give you some BYU Sports Nation karma to uh, throw well on Friday. Get some great rest Get some rest great tonight. rest tonight. It's about tonight, we learned. Yeah. And we'll talk again <laughs> soon. Can't wait to watch, man. Thanks. Thanks, Dallin. Dallin Shirts. Uh, dude, he's, he, we've had him on like three or four times. Every time it's from NCAs. I love him. 6'6". <laughs> six, six. German was his first language, by the way. Looks very German, right? In, in southern Brazil, they would have... A lot of Germans in they, Brazil. Yes, in southern Brazil. They would have yelled at him, Hello, Alimão. Fala inglês. Hey, German. Speak English. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny. He's, he's great. Okay, if you want to watch uh, Dallin Schertz and the rest of BYU Track and Field's 52 athletes who qualified for the NCAA West prelims, competition starts today, goes through Saturday on ESPN+. How are you feeling about Kevin Young's recruiting class so far in his first season as BYU basketball head coach? Describe it in four words, will you? More of your responses next. This is BYU Sports Nation. I will, Spencer, yes. Okay. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Our question of the day is as follows. With BYU basketball signing four-star Elijah Crawford, which four words would you use to describe Kevin Young's first recruiting class so far? Jeremy Barker on X says, Young has the power. Young has the power! Our elite voice of the day presented by PAX Healthcare, elevated from Skylar Ludlow on X, who says, Are you not entertained? Yes, Gladiator. Maximus. So that good. Gift. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Hey, how about devotionals on Sunday and now Wednesday this week in Arizona and Arkansas from BYU Athletics? Track and field doing it last night. Awesome. The administrators, well done, local guys. leaders, so many involved, that's awesome. Our thanks to today's guest, Trent Placid and Dallin Shirts. Sorry to Dennis Pitta, you never threw discus. Indeed he didn't. For Jeremiah Spencer, shout out to Shauna Robach. See you tomorrow. Go Cougs.